The company was a drug organization run by uh, Jose Montalvo, who was also known as Cello. Then you had another organization doing pretty much the same thing, uh, run by Adam Diaz. How does your organization compare to the company? Nothing at all. What do you mean? Because the company was a fucking low scale shit. Half a grand, grand shit, like dimes, dimes. He didn't have the connections I had. I could take him off of the fucking business in a heartbeat. But I didn't want to do that. Why? Because he didn't represent no, no competition to me. And on top of that, his sister was in love with me. Beautiful girl. I was banging the shit out of her. So what's it take to be the boss? Balls. And you got to be responsible. I know how a lot of kilos on Escobar because I know the stamp. When you have a Colombian connection, if they bring you 1,500 kilos and you have it in a place, you're already responsible for that. I don't care if tomorrow the kilos goes down $2,000 a piece, $3,000, $5,000, it doesn't matter. You're already responsible for that amount. You better fucking come forward with the money. For what? What fucking, they kill you. No, no make no difference to them. I had a, several stores open in East New York. Blake Avenue, Preston Avenue, Pensiclin Avenue, Newlands in Vermont. So you can get anything at your store. You can get Pampers or you can get 10 kilos. You, this is a regular grocery store. Any regular customer will walk in the aisle, take their cereal, take their whatever, the other clients that will go for the other product will walk quietly all the way to the back. On the back, it was a metal door. You knock on that door, and the guy will open the door for you, and you give him the money. I won half a key, I won 62 ounces. So when they come out of there, they come out with a whole bunch of groceries, but underneath all of that, you got kilos. When I saw Adam the first time, I said, this is the guy that we should work with. I knew Barron for a while already. I took him a porch on 9-11, candy red, beautiful vehicle. And I said, look, Barron, I don't like ghetto music. I like Julio Iglesias. I like Brian Adams, you know? But I don't like those fucking big black boxes with big speakers. So I hate that shit. But I want to hear the music. And I says, by the way, don't make any holes on my porch. You're not going to believe it. When I came back to pick up my porch, he didn't make not one hole in that car. And the car sounded like a fucking club. Not only that he put music there to listen to Julio Glazer, but he say, you want somebody to listen to black music, you, they could put it on, Adam. But it's up to you. I had three fucking machines counting money, and it's still not enough time. 